Well, today, a 47-year-old man was given a suspended sentence for attempting to murder his 83-year-old dying mother, Vera, in a nursing home in Wexford in January 2012. Gerald Volroth, who pleaded guilty to the attempted murder, had held a pillow over the face of his mum while keeping vigil by her deathbed. Originally charged with her murder, that charge was dropped because the test showed no signs of suffocation. Well, this case raises the whole issue of euthanasia, mercy killings and assisted suicides. And to discuss those now, I'm joined by Dr. Gina McQuillan, palliative consultant at St. Francis Hospice here in Rohini, and by Michael Nugent, who's co-founder of Right to Die Ireland. And you have a very personal story, which we'll discuss in a moment. First of all, Regina McQuillan, to quote Paul Carney today, he said when giving Gerald Volorath a suspended sentence, he took into account the fact that he was entirely motivated by compassion and that his motivation was in no way malevolent. I think it was an interesting judgment, and I only know what's in the report in the media. Mm. I haven't read the court reports. But I do think that I can see why, what Paul Carney said, I'm not too sure whether I would agree with him, because although Mr. Volroth may may have not wanted to do anything harm to any harm to his mother, he did plead guilty to attempting to murder her, and I do think that's a very serious situation. Is it ever okay, do you think, Regina, to assist someone to die? I don't think it's okay to assist someone to die because I do think we are in a situation where people can be vulnerable, mm. and I think then it's the vulnerable people in society. I think are those who are most at risk. So although you may have situations where there may be people who are very well able, very articulate, very clear thinking about what their wishes are, and those people may feel that they have been deprived of something of wish, for instance, the right to die at a time without choosing, I do think that the, from the point of view of society as a whole, we need to protect society as a whole, including the vulnerable, including people like this lady who had appeared, again from the newspaper reports, to have been in a very frail condition and probably not to be able to make a very clear decision about what she wanted at that time. Michael, I mean, part of the reason you became co-founder of this group, Right to Die, was your own wife and tragically passed away from cancer. And I know you had agreed with her that if needs be, you would have assisted her in taking her own, her own life. But what about Regina's point, I suppose, that it is a slippery slope and that you can end up also as with people either very ill, very vulnerable or very old, feeling that they shouldn't stay alive, that they are a burden on other people. Yeah, and obviously you've got to have safeguards to make sure that happens. But what we have at the moment is the kind of personal tragedy that you get when you criminalise something that a lot of people think is morally good, that some people think is a moral obligation, which is to help a rational, terminally ill loved one to avoid unnecessary suffering and to gain the extra quality of life that you have from knowing that you're not going to have to worry about suffering at the end. And that, that's what I think is key to it. It's not about the act of dying it's about the quality of life that you get from knowing that you're going to minimise the, the suffering at the end. And the way you say it, that sounds fine. But I suppose in the recent case of Mary Fleming, she was of sound mind. She knew that she wanted to one day, if she had needs be, to have an assisted suicide. Well, what about the woman in this case? Maybe if you're not well enough, if you're not mentally aware enough, how do you make that choice? Well, that's why you need a law and you need safeguards and you need procedures. Because if in this circumstance, this gentleman had the opportunity to, to say to somebody in authority, here's the situation, I've discussed this with my mother before she, she reached this stage, uh, do whatever psychiatric tests, find out what, what's necessary and put in the safeguards. But because the safeguards weren't there, because there's no law, we just have this not in a wink Irish solution to an Irish problem of saying actually it would probably be okay. And even the High Court nearly, nearly said mm. that. It means that the person is put in an impossible situation. Regina, you say so? I suppose I'd have a worry. <coughs> excuse me. I have a worry about the idea that there's not a wink solution to the problem because I don't think there should be an a wink solution to the problem. But there is. That's what the yeah. High Court has said in the Marty Curran case, yeah. and, um, and it's yeah. essentially what was said today yeah. Yeah. that that it's it, that you know it, it's okay um, if, if if it's compassionate, the judge might be might take a certain decision. But that doesn't provide that this sort of peace of mind that either the dying person or their loved ones need. Yeah, and I actually think that the judge saying it's compassionate. I don't think it's actually the. I don't know the judge's reasoning. Again, I haven't seen the whole, the whole court case. I do think it's a really serious situation that in, in a situation where somebody who's very vulnerable can have somebody in, admitting to attempted murder and in that situation getting a very sort of minimal sentence. I think that providing legislation, I think in, in many countries there is a concern about the legislation. Can you actually put in the correct safeguards? So in the High Court case in relation to the Mary Fleming judgment, the High Court, the Irish High Court said, no, you couldn't protect 
about, for the vulnerable. They said they looked at different countries and said British Columbia looked at the evidence and said you could, and the Irish the Irish courts looked at the evidence and said you couldn't put in the appropriate. But the very fact that we don't have legislation does mm-hmm. that mean that people like I suppose judges have to step in and decide, you know, well, what they think? Yeah, they didn't actually. The High Court didn't actually say that. What they said is is that if the Parliament could put in place sufficient safeguards, mm-hmm. then the Parliament could legislate. All that they found is that the Constitution doesn't of itself provide a right to assisted suicide, but they didn't rule out the Parliament ruling for that by, by putting in safeguards. As a, go on. Yeah, and I suppose the, the, the issue is how, how good are the safeguards, how well can you put in the safeguards? Are they that effective? There is, and I suppose one of the arguments in these situations, well, the two arguments are there's arguments on both sides. So some people say you can put in very good safeguards and protect people. There are other countries where there's other people who develop the evidence or show the evidence to say that you can't put in these, these type of safeguards. And I think that you, there may be, and I'd hope that there aren't, but there may be people in Ireland this evening who are feeling vulnerable because of this action and because of the court's response to it. Okay. Yeah, a line, Michael. Okay, and, and obviously they should be protected and their rights should be respected and so should the rights of those who rationally choose to die at the time of their own choosing. Okay, Regina, Michael, thank you both very much for coming tonight. Sorry, Michael, again about your wife, Anne.